It's about, yeah, it's about 10.30. Got a lot done this morning. Now we'll try to get this butternut knocked out here and get it on the tractor, take over to the truck and uh, take them over to Jonesboro, Tennessee to Curtis's shop. Now this is the second butternut out of that last one that we done, or the same log rather, it was a 14 footer and we cut it to an eight and a six footer. This is the eight footer right here. And unlike the six footer, this one's going to pose some potential problems here when sawing. And we'll try to address that before we even start to take care of it on the front end so it doesn't give us any problems later on once we start slabbing this thing out to eight quarter slabs. And this is an eight footer. And my width down here is 18 inches. I got it turned already to the widest point. So we're looking at 18 inch wide slabs right through the middle. The rest of them will probably be 14 to 16. So let me bring the camera in guys and show you all the problem we're gonna have with this log and my strategy to hopefully overcome that and get some good slabs out of it. Well, it's kind of hard to tell on this end it's painted, the log yard done that whenever they sort them off the truck, I'm assuming. But the pith is nowhere near it's centered right here. This tree either grew in a dense forest and had to uh, really grow kind of crooked to find some sunlight or it may have grown on the side of a mountain, who knows. But right here is the pith. And usually you want the pith right here in the middle, but it's way up here on this upper left quadrant here. Upper left quadrant. I'm going back to my anatomy days in college. So up here in the upper left quadrant, we'll call that, is where the pith is. And what I'm going to try to do is measure up from the bed and see how high this pith is in relation to the other end. And hopefully use our little log levelers here and get, these, get this pith on the same plane so we'll be able to saw it completely out of the log. And we're looking at 10 inches from the saw bed, give or take a quarter of an inch probably, to where the pith is. All right, down here on the far end, it's not really in the same place on the other end that's kind of up here on the upper side. This is more toward the middle, not in the middle, but more toward it. It's gonna be a lot higher up actually. It's gonna be 13 inches. So what we're gonna do is use these log levelers. There's one on both ends. I've never showed them much here on the channel. And we're gonna raise up the operator end to where the pith is 13 inches from the saw bed and we'll make a cut and kind of see how that's looking. Then use the AccuSet to come down and square up that pith in order to capture it into one slab, then it will be out of the picture and we'll commence on sawing the rest of this log up. So I've, I've done that many a times. I don't do it a whole lot on the channel, but that's a good tool these saw mills have, these little rollers on the side to raise up the ends when you got a taper like that or a pith that really doesn't behave. That's really, that's one of the worst uh, things you can have is a pith on a log and for one, it's not centered, and number two, it's kind of twisted from one end to the other, plus there's a small taper here as well. And there's also, on this one side, an old cat face, it looks like. Actually, that's a limb. There's a limb on this side that's healed over. So maybe, just maybe, we'll have some crotch figure here today. Wouldn't that be nice? Some crotch figure and some butternut. Don't look like it was much of a limb at all. Looks like it healed over, but we may get something right there. So uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, stick with us, guys, and let's get the saw in here and see what we can do with this pith.
getting hot out here today as usual. I had to make three cuts right there. The first one was not shallow enough. Now I made the second one and checked my measurements. And I was off just a little on these rollers. So what I done was I raised up the roller, uh, the furthest one from me, to level it out just a little bit better. So uh, we'll take this one off and we should have a good centered pith after that one. As you can see the taper in this log, that far end is pretty thick. Over here, it's about a quarter of an inch on the operator side. Let's check our measurement now from the reference face right here on top down to the pith. And uh, give or take about a quarter of an inch, we should be right on the money on both ends here. About four and an eighth right here to the pith, about four and an eighth. Down here on the far end, we're looking for about three and three quarters to four inches to four and a quarter in that area and I'm happy. And we're at three and seven eighths. So we're off about a quarter of an inch on the pith. So uh, that's not too bad, I'll take it because I can still get that pith centered pretty close inside of one slab and get rid of it. We'll make our first slab cut, then come down and center that pith in one of the slabs, then uh, get rid of it. And then we'll have about 10 inches left of good sawing and no more worries about this old pith. guys even though I was off just a little here's the operator end showing you where the pith is right there in the middle and on the side of the board you see how it's offset right there and uh, right up there it's a nice crotch figure we'll take a look at that here in just a minute but I'll give you guys the results here on our strategy and how it worked out right there's our pith on this end let's walk down here to the far end Pith is right in the center. The lighting right there. There we go. On this end, the pith is right in the center. You know, the other slab, it's right here. So on this one's in the middle, it's more toward the top. But our saw curve really helped us out right there, being off a quarter of an inch. And as you can see in the rest of the log, there will be no more pith in it whatsoever. And that's what you're after right there. So really happy how this turned out. So here's the slab we just cut with the pith in it and there's that knot I showed you earlier in the video and I was hoping for some crotch figure and right there it is. Not as uh, obvious as walnut and it's not too bad and the next slab may have some more in it actually as we work our way down through the rest of this log. So some nice wood even though the pith is in this slab. Nice straight grain here on the sides width here that we're getting on some of these slabs we're looking at 17 inches and he needs at least 16 inches I think for a winter chair seat so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and unclamp it put these rollers down on both ends and flip it 180 degrees and work off that bark face at the bottom because it's easier to clamp off this large side than it is the bottom right there and I can also use the AccuSet come down and start my eight quarter slabs and get them squared up to where this bottom slab, which will be the widest one, will be exactly eight quarter on thickness. So we should get about, I don't know, maybe, maybe three more slabs out of this total. I'd give five out of it. We'll see what happens. Probably at least three of them. 
So let's get this thing knocked out and load it up in the truck. Get these two cleaned off and take a look at them. Get them loaded up in the truck and head over to Curtis's shop. I just talked to him on the phone and he's got a chair making class going on this week. So he'll have, he'll have maybe three to five students in there. So I'm not sure how much filming we'll get to do over there because of that I don't want to interrupt his class, but I'll definitely take the camera inside and give you guys a little glimpse of his uh, nice little timber frame shop he works out of. Cause all your dreams 
all your heart's desires They have withered from this way of life Into the water You will let me go Into the water All of this will flow Just a girl, when I found you there one day We've known a love divine We're torn apart far too many times You'll need to be alone again To the world I will 